Well, good afternoon. Um, Pastor Varga here uh, on our live Facebook. For today, we're in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. It's Saturday. We're looking forward to Sunday. Always do. And we were closed last Sunday because of the hurricane and big winds and losing electricity and all that. Got back up, clean up around the property and had some damage and some things and God has brought us through. We're here at 501 Ridgewood Avenue in Holly Hill, Sunday school at 9 and church at 10. If you're able to attend, you're certainly welcome. And then church in the evening at 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it starts out in verse 1. It says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Now, what kind of promises? The promises of eternal life. That's the biggest promise ever. I was able to lead a 70-year-old man to Christ today, and uh, he knew about it and was close to it and had Christian friends, but I guess just maybe nobody ever really challenged him to perceive Christ. Maybe thought he was saved, whatever, I don't know, but he trusted Christ today. That's wonderful, and I was able to lead a 13-year-old boy to Christ yesterday and had the same name as me, Gabriel. I like that. We had something in common. and and so, uh, But this promise of eternal life, that's the biggest promise in the Bible. We can go to heaven and be saved. And and then we have the promise we can be filled with the Holy Spirit and get others saved. I was just talking to a pastor uh, on the phone, Pastor Breedlaw, my dear friend for many years, uh, all the years I've been here actually, and a soul winner and a, and a great pastor. He pastors out there in Lake Helen. If you're in the Lake Helen area, um, he pastors the church there. I'm a Central Fellowship Baptist Church. Lamar Breedlove, Central Fellowship Baptist Church there in Lake Helen. And uh, if you need a good church and a, a fine church with a great pastor, Central Fellowship Baptist Church would be the place. Uh, so uh, when I was talking with him about this, and he's a great soul winner and, and wins people to Christ on a daily basis, but uh, this promise of eternal life, its once we have it, we're supposed to tell it to others. But there's something we should do once we acknowledge that promise and we have it in our life it says uh it says having therefore these promises dearly beloved that's uh, the the friends in christ there at the church at corneth uh, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god wow this is the verse i texted out today i I text out over 200 people every day, a Bible verse. And by the way, those I text out, I pray for. I text them out individually and pray for the individuals as I take quite a bit of time. But I work at it, uh, uh, try to do it earlier. Sometimes it's later, and sometimes it gets so jammed up during the day. I don't get to send some at all, and I apologize for that. But if you'd like to be on the texting list, today it was Second Corinthians 7 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh. You see, when you get saved, you get your sins forgiven and you're a child of God, but we have to do some self-cleansing. Yeah, self-cleansing. What do you, what do you mean self-cleansing? It means that, that um, once you're saved doesn't mean, you're, I mean your sins are all forgiven, but sometimes we can have some baggage and we can still, like maybe cigarettes or uh, maybe alcohol, I don't know. I, I've never smoked a cigarette. You smoke three and a half packs a day. I have not smoked a cigarette since I've been saved. I've not had any alcoholic beverage since I'm saved. 48 years, three months plus now. Uh, I, I, I haven't done any of that, but there are some things I've done. Uh, we all have some filthiness of the flesh, and whatever yours is or whatever I am, we need to cleanse ourselves from it. We need to pull on the whole armor of God. It says here in verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, the promises of the Bible, the promises of eternal life, it says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the, all, we should, not a one thing, not a cigarette, uh, not a bottle of alcohol, uh, not a dirty magazine, uh, not a lie, not a laziness, not a whatever, name your sin, I don't know, name your sin and your sins. But it says, having therefore these promise of eternal life and the promise of the Holy Spirit being in us and the promise that the Lord never leave us nor forsake us, 
And the promise there did no temptation taken us, but is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer us to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape with that wonderful promise also. Oh, we have wonderful promises. So it says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the food. There's something that we have to do if we've received Christ of cleansing ourselves and self-examination. Hunter Night Psalm says, Search me, O God, and try me, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Uh, so uh, uh, all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So we have to bring it on to perfection. Will we be perfect? Yes, when I'm in heaven. Uh, well, like Jesus, I will have been perfected unto perfection and but i should be working towards it i should be cleansing myself it's just cleanse yourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god so here we have such a wonderful verse second corinthians 7 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved why are these Corinthians dearly beloved? It was the most carnal church that Paul wrote to. But there were dearly beloved people there at the church at Corinth. Yeah, there were dearly beloved people because why? They were saved, and he tried to encourage them. Let us therefore cleanse ourselves. There needs to be self-cleansing. There needs to be self-examination. There needs to be repentance, even as a Christian. Repentance for salvation and repentance for while we are saved, you see, to be uh, not backslidden. And my phone, my phone slipped down. You lost me for a minute. You've got me back. Amen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear perfecting holiness it means we should be uh, god said this in another verse of scripture be ye holy uh, for i am holy uh, be ye holy uh, for i am holy i'm gonna take this thing in my hand for a minute now and go like this one if worry about it falling down again be ye holy uh, for i am holy that's what god says how holy are you you say well how can i be holy i'm just a sinner you have the holy ghost in you you have the holy spirit because of Christ living in us, the Spirit of Christ living in us, the Blessed Holy Ghost, we can be holy, and we can live a Holy Ghost. So be holy, for I am holy. God's calling for separation. Uh, uh, we we looked at that. Uh, it says, um, remember there in, in, in chapter 6, uh, I was going to finish this out last night, never to get back to do it. I forgot it didn't. I'll make a mention of it now. In chapter 7, uh, and I was going to preach on this last night, never to get to it. Verse 14. Let's go back to chapter 6, verse 14. I'll do that because I was supposed to do it yesterday afternoon or last night, and I didn't. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is part of holy living. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Or what communion uh, hath light with darkness? There you go. And what could, uh, concord hath Christ with Belial? I'm going to put this thing back up here again so uh, so I can be a little more stable here and not be wiggling around all over. Uh, this is from Second Corinthians 6. It says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. We're the temple. We don't have no more temples here. There ain't no holy buildings anymore. Where a lot of these, the Catholics, uh, they uh, they make a big fancy building and they put idols in it. No, no, that's not of God. Uh, it says, For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, you and I, not in buildings, as God has said, I will dwell in them individually and walk in them, yes, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You see, God dwells in people, and God leads people, and God doesn't live in buildings, no matter if it's in... I remember we used to be in a Central Baptist Church, a 
a wonderful church there that was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was old converted converted warehouse. And uh, I remember that uh, back Jerry Falwell, uh, the first one there, uh, uh, he built a, uh, the big church there in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, Liberty Baptist uh, Church, I believe it was called. And he, he bought an old pop factory and they converted the pop factory into a church. And so you can convert a warehouse, Central Baptist. You can convert a pop factory, Liberty, uh, Jerry Falwell, and uh, the roots that they had back there uh, many years ago, I believe in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, we'll be there, God, and they shall be my people. And verse 17, and we're actually finishing up yesterday, is that I forgot to do this last night. I'm doing it now. Uh, wherefore come out from among them be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you don't touch that dirtiness don't touch that filthiness and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters uh, saith the Lord Almighty yeah so separated living that's what we're supposed to be and then this one verse we touched upon here now in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 and we'll read it again as we started out with Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So once we've got the promise of eternal life, uh, and then we go on, uh, as it says here, uh, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness, filthiness. You got the filthiness in you? You got any dirty thoughts in your mind? You got the love and desire for alcohol or cigarettes or marijuana or, or crack cocaine or you have hatred in your heart? Well, that's filthy. We need to cleanse ourselves from this filthiness. Yeah, that's what it says. From all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What's the fear of God? It's a reverential trust in God with a hatred for evil. Well, do you have it? I've been saved. April 4th, 1969, I was saved. You've been saved? You need to take that promise today. You ain't in the ball game. You're going to hell if you're not saved. If you're not saved, you need to get saved today. All you have to do is, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So thankful this very day I had a 70-year-old man trust Christ and be saved. Yesterday I had a 13-year-old young man, same name as me, Gabriel. He trusted Christ and got saved. What a blessing it is. Maybe you're not saved and you're seeing this on the Facebook or YouTube or some other internet. Someone's forwarded to you or whatever. We'll give you a chance to get saved today. I'm a Baptist preacher, but Baptists won't save you. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries. Assemblies of God won't save you. I was saved in a Methodist church. Methodists won't save you. Only Jesus will save you. Would you repent and turn from your sins today and be born again? Be converted. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross rose in the grave the third day the best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my savior thank you for saving me right now God bless you we'll uh, talk to you again soon have a blessed day